Hello everybody, this again is James Wong from Microsoft Resources from our tech team. Today we'll be presenting to you Revit Server. This was released late September this year and we've been testing this out extensively in our sandbox and our little lab environment. Hopefully we can help you out and get you up and running after this little video so you won't have to pull out any more of your hairs. Alright, let's get started. So I already logged into Subscription Center. I'm just going to click on the Subscription Advantage Pack right here for Revit Architecture 2011. Since we're doing Revit Server, I'm just going to click on that. There's also a Revit Conceptual and Energy Analysis video we have, um, and Dolly is in charge of that. So check out our Vimeo channel for that. You notice that there's a lot of information about the Revit Server extension as well as a README file. Please, please look at the README file. It's very important. There's a lot of prerequisites um, that you need to set up prior to installing Revit Server. Um, additionally, there is two components. There's a server installation as well as an application installation. The server installation, of course, goes on the server. An application installation goes on your um, workstations. Um, make sure your workstations have Web Update 2. If you have Revit Architecture, Structure, or MEP, they need Web Update 2 for all of the products before we begin. All right, so let's go ahead and download them. So as you can see here, here's my virtual environment. I'm using VMware Workstation. I've already configured two servers here. Um, they're both Windows Server 2008 R2 Enterprise Edition. Um, I've already pre-configured it with IP addresses and etc. cetera, um, as well as installing Microsoft Silverlight. A caveat to this is that when you to install Silverlight, you actually need to make um, the Microsoft.com domain a um, trusted site or else the installation would not go through. So as you can see by this demonstration it actually just went through. I'm going to close out of that. Next thing to do is your server manager. So I'm logged into my server right now, DC1, and I'm in the add roles wizard. I already took a look at the readme file and noted down all the roles that I need. They include the application server and the web server. I'm going to check that off. And introduction, just make sure you read all that. So I'm going to include um, TCP port sharing as well as TCP activation and also web server IIS support and all the required roles and services. Um, this is needed for um, Windows Server 2008 R2 um, in order to get Revit Server working. I'm just going to click on next. And on the web server side, we're going to have a couple of things. ASP.NET is, is one thing, .NET extensibility, ASP, CGI, server side includes... Um, I'm also including basic authentication, Windows authentication, as well as various authentications down here. What this does is it allows your Revit server, since they are a, based on the web portal, um, to have permissions. Also, I'm going to include IIS scripting tools, and this was outlined in the README file. Just make sure you double check that all the required roles and services are there, and they are. I'm just going to click on Next. Review the summary to make sure that everything is there again, and click on Install. Installation does take quite a few moments, so I just paused the recording, and you can see that uh, my features and roles are installed successful. I'm just going to click on close here, and close out of this guy as well. And to make sure that I'm doing it properly, I'm just going to reboot the machine. To, it's always a safe practice to do so. I'm going to restart. I'll click on OK. All right, and that's rebooting. So as you can see here, the server has already successfully rebooted and I've run the setup file for Revit server extension. So I'm just going to click on install products here. Make sure you read all the information on the select server type dialog box. You will have to plan your environment accordingly. You have to decide which servers in your environment will be the local server, which server will be the central server for Revit server. I'm going to call DC1 a central server for this test and I'm going to just click on next. There's not too many things to configure but let's review the paths a little bit. The default installation, as you can see here, is the C drive. You can change it as needed. And the next two paths are important for the BIM administrator. The first one is the path where Revit projects are cached. There are times when you would need to remove cached files from all the local servers, um, such as replacing models with versions that have common data files. If you don't do so, you will get data corruption. So make sure you um, clear the cache when you have um, models that you need to be replaced. The next path to note down is where your shared projects are stored. This should be a space large enough for all your working central files. Typically, it is not the C drive. I would recommend a data storage device, iSCSI device, etc., etc. 
So for this demonstration, I'm just going to keep it on the C drive and click Next. And configuration complete and install. You can see this installation is actually going pretty quick. All right, it's moving back, removing backup files, and we are finished. So Revit Server has finished installing. What I'm going to do is actually load Internet Explorer and try to access it. Um, I want to go to DC1 slash Revit Server Admin. Click Enter. As you can see here, that Silverlight was already installed, but I'm having a issue. What this means is that I'll actually have to go into Tools, Internet Options, Security, Trusted Sites, and add DC1 as a trusted site. So I've already just done so. Click Close. I'll click OK. I'm going to close this and restart the browser. And I'm going to hit DC1 again. As you can see here, it's loading properly. And here you go. DC1 is a central server. And you have your tools to create a new folder. You can delete. You can cut, copy, paste to clipboard, or lock files. So make sure you know what each tool does, particularly the lock tool. As the BIM administrator, you will need it when you perform maintenance to the cent Revit central files or you perform backup of your files. I cannot stress this enough. Please, please make your backup files and make it often, especially after critical project milestones. And don't just back up. Make sure you test your backup to make sure that it's working. So now that we got Revit server up and running, um, we want to lock it down a little bit so that we don't want anyone messing with it. Um, we're going to set up some permissions. We're going to close out of Revit server administrator window and initialize server manager. Go into the web server role, IIS. I'm going to scroll down all the way to the Revit server admin. And authentication, what I'm going to do is actually disable anonymous authentication. And I'm going to enable Windows authentication as well as basic authentication. And going back to Revit Server Admin, in the authorization rules, I'm going to remove the rule for all users. And I'm only going to allow my administrators to have access. So I'm click on that. All right. Into my Internet Explorer window, I'm going to go ahead and go to DC1 again, Revit Server. It's going to ask me for a username and password. You can see that only be available to the administrators group. In addition, you can actually lock it down so that um, you can specify that only BIM administrators can go in as well. So you can go add another allow rule and you can go in and say, hey, I want BIM administrators. And this is pre configured with Active Directory. Click on that. All right, and that's setting up some basic permissions for Revit Server. So this concludes our video for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to shoot me an email. Thanks.